Hello and welcome to the League One preview podcast here on the Lower League Look. I am back, unfortunately for all of you listeners, but we have the regular. Callum is still here. Hello, Callum. I don't know if I like being referred to as the regular, but welcome <laughs> back. Welcome back. We had uh, we had a Yorkshire invasion last week with uh, with Jamie going through uh, all the going through all the uh, the teams and what their aims should be. But no, nice to have you back. Thank you. Yes, um, it was a very. I'm guessing it was a very Lincoln City esque podcast last week. So, no, we limited it to sixty. So we basically for all the for all the uh, for what people need to do for the end of the season, we limited every team to sixty seconds. So That's a good uh, idea. we 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 ended up not talking too much about um, about Lincoln City. But there you go. Well, in the second half of today's podcast, you will get to do your lots of talking about, <laughs> Link, uh, about Lincoln City. So we've only three League One games this weekend. We're going to cover all three of them in the first half of the episode. Um, and in the second half, we will look at the playoff race and potentially also the relegation battle, which is starting to dwindle down to three or four teams left with three or four already probably down. So. Let's kick this off this week with a question, and it's a, a question I'm pretty sure we've asked before, but we asked it at the start of the season. It's now three quarters of the way through the season. Is if you could have any player from any League One club to come into the current Lincoln City team, who would you have? Uh, uh, a midfielder, <laughs> just just <laughs> a a midfielder. I don't care who you are, um, but but any midfielder. Although. I think you, you've you've got to be hard pressed, really, to go against. I, I I'd argue uh, Alfie May probably, mm -hmm. just because you know Lincoln for all for all their intents and purposes, they they've only just found a striker. We've had we've had Ben House out all season, pretty much. Mm -hmm. He came back for what felt like two games, and now he's he's back injured again. <laughs> With Alfie May, okay, you know we. <laughs> It's weird to say this about the top goal scorer in the league. You don't, you're not always going to get a goal from him, mm. but just he will pop up with a goal every now and then. Um, but I'd say with either him or or the quality that that Colby Bishop brings as well, mm. e either one of those two just would would add. I, I kind of want to say that star fact to the Lincoln City side. Lincoln City mm -hmm. don't have many. How, how do you call it? They don't have many superstars yeah and Your i think team, both yeah. of them kind of bring the same both of them bring like an x factor mm -hmm. i guess uh, what about orient is there any uh, any play you'd bring him no i, I had to have a good think about this because of all our injuries everyone's probably looking at a striker i've not gone with a striker because dan ajay is a very good league one striker when he's fit we've got a good, very good squad the position i would like is ronnie edwards if i had to pick a player of peterborough yeah. um ball playing center half a play a defender that can pass through the thirds is exactly what richie wellens would love in his defense um because we've only really got one defender that can do that on the left hand side if you could have a partner him with a right hand sided def a right footed defender i think that's uh, that opens up so many avenues for how we set up our attacks because at the moment they're, we're very limited with our passing range on the right-hand side of our defence. Usually the ball will end up out for a goal kick or in one of the stands, to be honest, or back with the goalkeeper. It's There's no penetration yeah. there. Um, and Ronnie that. Edwards I, I, would bring that. I feel like with Lincoln, if we brought in a defender, it would upset everything. Yeah. Skabal has done so much to to make that back three settled. If, you, if you'd have said at the, at the start of the season that Adam Jackson wouldn't be a starter... Mm -hmm. You know, especially at the end of last season, that something would have happened for him not to be a starter. We would have not believed you. But that back three of of Rowan, O'Connor, and uh, and Mitchell has has I I don't want to say it's the league's best because I'll probably get a lot of slack for that. <laughs> but defensively, you can't really argue with it. It's but it has been incredible. So I, I I'd go with a with a star player, a player that adds that X factor, which we kind of got Enrico Hackett, I guess. But no one who really sells the shirt, I imagine. No, it's one of them, isn't it? It's one of them on Football Manager where you look at your end of, shirt, your end of year shirt sales and there's just like five players who you think, really? Why, why is he sold how so are you though, Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I suppose ben House is start is sort of that, but then how you know he's 
he's been out injured for the whole time, and Rico Hackett's kind of molding himself into that. But no, it's Both Tyler Walker was that kind of that man as well, wasn't it? I think he signed played about season. games, hasn't he? He's yeah. like, don't know how many play off the top of my head, but he's been you know he's been out all season, and you know I'd be. I, I'm not sure on the length of his contract, but whether we see him ever again playing a Lincoln City shirt, you 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 kind of question, you know, maybe if we get to the League One playoffs, which will be <laughs> a bit, he might be for that. But it's kind of been a, you know, we'll see towards the end of the season and no news has come out about his availability. So, yeah, it's up in the air, really. But yeah, a lot we could talk about this forever, I think. Oh, we could. Yeah, it could be the the two L podcasts, and uh, that <laughs> will probably happen next week when our two teams meet in the next. Just the, half, the first half of the podcast. Yeah, yeah. It's just gonna be, yeah. <laughs> and it wouldn't surprise me if it was because it's quite a big game in the grand scheme of things. But enough 100%. of that. That's next week. Um, so we're going to start this week with two teams not at the top of the league, completely out of form, and looking destined to go down is Burton Albion versus Port Vale. Um, so Port Vale, um, so we'll start with Burton Albion. Their home form is six wins, four draws and eight losses. Uh, they currently sit in 20th and have lost their last four at home. They have the joint second lowest home scorers with 17, and that's alongside Shrewsbury, and I believe it's Exeter. Their top scorer has five, and that player doesn't play for the club anymore. He is at Wickham Wanderers. Um, Burton averaged the least possession in the league with 40.9 uh, they sit 21st for expected goals with only 35 they are 7th for XG conceded with 50.2 they have they are sit 23rd in possession 1 in the final third which uh, doesn't surprise me because their low block is literally in, on their goal line and they currently sit 5 points above the bottom 4 um, um, Port Vale did win the reverse fixture 2 0, and I believe it was October. But for Port Vale, it's pretty grim reading as well. They've got no win in yeah. 10 and have just scored the seven goals. Their away form is three wins, six draws, and nine losses. They're the third lowest scoring team away from home. Um, they've got five defeats in their last six away, drawing the other, which was against us. Um, their top scorer is Ben Garrity, who's got nine. They sit 19th in clean sheets, 14th in average possession, 18th for possession one in the final third, um, and they are six points from safety with a game in hand. Um, there was some news coming out of Port Vale about an hour ago at the time of recording that director of football David Flickcroft has also left his role at the football club, which going through the replies on X has delighted certain Port Vale fans and even Leon Legg got a bit involved saying where can he put uh, can he hand in his CV for the job so this game to me has got either nil nil written all over it because neither team is going to want to come out their six yard box or it's going to be really high scoring and we're going to be completely wrong with what we're going to say about this game I think it's, this one's quite interesting because it's kind of a rivalry that no one knows about. It's, it's one of those rivalries that no one knows about except the two teams involved in it because mm. they're, I mean, I'm probably going to get this ex- incredibly wrong, but they're kind of two teams from Staffordshire that aren't Stoke City that kind of were just like, let's have a rivalry with each other because we're ne- neither of us are ever going to properly have a rivalry with Stoke. <laughs> well, so let's, you let's just hate each other. <laughs> Well, next... you never know at this trade. But... <laughs> Imagine next year we have Stoke, Burton and Port Vale in this league. They all just hate each other. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, 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 this one's interesting because Darren Moore is... He's he's kind of... I think he's... I, I, I He's a smart man, is, hmm. is, is Mr. Moore. I think he's kind of been sold a lie, hmm. if I'm honest. He, he's kind of walked into this job and not, not realised the mess that he has to clean up and i don't mm-hmm. think he's exactly the type of person that you you want to to clean up a mess he, he's not that type of manager um there there are some managers that that flourish in teams that can dominate the ball and there mm-hmm. are some teams there are obviously managers that that dominate the other way we see it all the time with with you know managers that are great at the top end of the championship but then you know flump in at the bottom end. Hmm. Um, Sean Dyche is probably the best example of that, where he's great at 
a team bottom, but as soon as he tries to push a, a side forward, he's shocking. Darren was kind of the opposite of that. He's a very, you know, we, we saw it with, with Sheffield United, uh, Sheffield Wednesday, sorry. Whoops, that's me never going to Sheffield again. Um, <laughs> we saw it there, didn't we, that he he knows how to to dominate sides, but isn't very good at not dominating sides, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. And Paul Bale just aren't the team that you can do that with. No, no, no. So... I think it's a weird one with Port Vale because, like, I look at their squad and they do have some very decent players for this level. I I like Nathan Chisley. I think he's a really good player. Ben Garrett is a I, good You player. mention his name every single yeah. week on this podcast. I'm I, sure I, <laughs> I, I remember doing a recruitment plan for the summer for who I'd like to see at Orient, and Ethan Chisley was near the top of my list to, for us to sign. Um, Might get him this they've... week, this year, yeah. Uh, who knows? They've got Gavin Massey, who played, for, who's a nippy winger. Um, defensively, though, they're a bit of a shambles. Um, the one player I was really impressed with, I cannot remember his name. Though. Their left-sided centre half, and he was really, really good um, in the eighty minutes when we played Port Vale. And then they took him off, and their defence looked like an absolute mess. But I can't remember the geezer's name. Um, I think the concerning thing for Port Vale is they haven't won this year yet. Um, yeah. Their last win was on the 29th of December, which was 3 0 at home to Blackpool. Um, yeah, yeah. Since then, they've you lost to Carlisle, them. they've lost to Fleetwood, they've lost to Cheltenham, they've lost to Reading, they drew with Fleetwood again, and they lost to Shrewsbury. Um, so it's not it's not exactly grim read, uh, green Great reading, read. I'm going to call it. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I think. They, the the savior for Burton Albion, if if we if we're looking at, we'll, we'll get on to relegation. I think uh, towards the end of the pod, but I think the savior for Burton Albion is there are kind of at all points in the season. I mean, if you look at the last six games, maybe not, but for most of the season, there has been four teams worse than them. Yes, which I'm not I'm not going to say is a good thing, <laughs> but if you're consistently the twentieth best team in the league and there are four teams worse than you you are probably going to just survive against relegation. Yeah. yeah. So that that would that's what I'd kind of say is is their saving grace. And I'd I'd say that Port Vale, maybe not at the start of the season were, but definitely are now worse than them. Even mm-hmm. though, you know, on the last six games they are ahead of them. Um but I, this is one of those games I can kind of see it being a two one. I I if if we're if we're doing predictions this week, which I'm sure Will be make a huge amount of difference to the table, whatever that is at the minute. Um, I I'd go with done t- the last. <laughs> no, to, to be fair, well, I don't think we, we didn't really. I think we did quick predictions last week, but I didn't really put a lot of thought into it. The way I ever put a lot of thoughts into my predictions, <laughs> right? um, I I would argue for a, a two-one. Oh, it is. It's up in the air. If I'm honest, I go with a two-one Burton win. Okay, uh, um, I, I mainly have because the. They they're used to playing on a pitch as bad as Burton Albion's, <laughs> so so perhaps maybe that gives them the home advantage on account of the fact that they're they know how bad their pitch is. Port Vale might not. <laughs> yeah, it's a fair point, and both teams, as we know, both can't score. Um, I I just... A, a, I just had a random thought. Do we know where Burton Albion train during these international breaks? That's a good point, isn't it? Because England go and nick their training ground, isn't England it? England have they? their training ground. Where are they playing right now? Where are they training right now? Are they just training <laughs> at... Um, if I remember, is it, is it uh, having grown up in Burton, and, and Burton fans will get this reference, are they just like training at like Robert Sutton <laughs> Secondary School or something like that? That's what... like, Where do they train? Funnily enough, that's what... Um, so when at a school I used to work at, Orient have a relationship with that school and we rent their astro pitch when it's like snowing and stuff like that when uh chigwall's all boggy and horrible so we rent a like a astro pitch from a school which was quite cool um so it, it's quite common or we do what if we're like are away from home we seem to have relationships with liverpool because of the american yeah. owners and we get to use theirs which is quite cool um, that's all right i suppose yeah it's just just one of those weird random thoughts that i've just had where, could, could, you, could you imagine training on the same pitch though? You've got Burton Albion on one pitch, England <laughs> on the other pitch, and they just like and Southgate's just watching them going over hard, there, watching their hard. back five or back nine in their case, just all transition side to side. 
Just do it half and half. Do what Frank, you got it like split the Frank Lampard was there. Frank Lampard was there the other day, weren't he? It's the new the new Burton Albion money. Yeah, yeah Frank Lampard. <laughs> it's probably oh, about the level yeah. he deserves a job but, at the moment. Yeah, that, that, that well, we we've digressed from the actual from the topic, haven't we? But no, um, as for this, way, I don't think I don't think the quality of England, if you can call it that, will uh, will seep through to Burton Albion at any point, uh, nope. especially not this weekend. But uh, but no, talking about quality, a game that will have even less of it is Carlisle against <laughs> Stephen <Davidich. laughs> Oh, I really can't talk about Stevenage because it winds me up. Just because of their manager, he winds me up. He's hilarious, isn't he? This is this is what what I've started realizing is, and I, I have to preface this or preface this by saying that I work in the media. My my mm-hmm. job is media, so getting clicks and comments and stuff from all of you is is what I love doing. And I have never known a manager better at doing that <laughs> than Steve Bloody Evans. He's brilliant, isn't he? He's incredible. <laughs> They probably, I'm hope. Well, I don't know if it was covered on Monday's show, but obviously we beat Stevenage last week, and there's been there's this stupid rivalry between the clubs. I don't know why it's. I think it's because of last year, um, and Wellens lifted like a fake trophy at the end of the game because <laughs> if you're a Stevenage fan, they're prime housery, aren't they? They are prime team prime shit housery, quite frankly. Yeah, and he got. Wellens was getting nicked from stick from all angles from their fans, which is he, he don't mind. And every 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 home fan does it to an away manager. So he went at the end of the game when we won. He went over to our fans and pretended to lift a trophy. Big old Dan Sweeney hated that. Uh, goes over to Richie Wellens and squares up to him. And then Steve Evans called it. Um, there was no need for it. Well, Steve, <laughs> I have a word for you. Right. At the end of every game, you do your big fist pump in your coat jacket that somehow the zip still stays on when you're doing that <laughs> so just, oh. it's uh swings and roundabouts shall we say um i just i just i i i i don't have any time for him at all as a as a as a human being like as, as a human being i have no time for him but as someone who works in the media I have all the time in the world for him. I, I know what you mean, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, he, he could single-handedly pay someone's paycheck for a month in terms of quotes, <laughs> yeah. but in terms of him as a human being, I don't think he's he's not the person... I always judge people, like, this is what I always say, would I want to go for a pint with someone? Steve Evans, yeah. I could not think of anyone less I would like to go for a pint with. I, I think it's probably a fair way to put it. No, he'd probably come out with some sort of quote saying, "Oh, I had the referee in my office just before before our pint," and he, he loves that, doesn't he? He, oh, I had the chief of referees, Howard Webb, on on the phone this morning, and he has apologised, and it's like, shut up, Steve. You probably didn't, did you? Oh, just he's he's one of those managers that if he could, he'd play the game of football in the referee's office yeah. or in the courtroom. <laughs> yeah, like it just just blind my head. Like at the end of the day. Referee, I get that this is. I mean, we'll get. Well, we're, we're we're kind of off topic completely compared to the match, but I think it, it kind of your players make mistakes, right? Football yeah. players make mistakes all the time, yeah. And so does everyone as a human being. To expect a referee who yeah. you know they're normally like forty, fifty, or whatever, to expect them to have a flawless game. It's impossible. In 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 any level is impossible. So first of all, cut him a bit of slack. He's an actual, you know, he's got human the balls being. to do it, really. Yeah, like I don't see, well, I don't see Steve Evans running, other than for the takeaway. But <laughs> I I can't imagine Steve Evans running for ninety plus minutes, getting every decision right. So no. who is he to tell? the referee what to do. Anyway, um, back to the actual game. Carlisle Stevenage, this game will probably send um the most caffeine hit human being to sleep. <laughs> um it'll be a game of very little football. It'll be a game of who can hit it from the halfway line into the goal it effectively, I think is yeah. is fair to say. If somebody now scores from the halfway line. I am I am God effectively. Yeah. You can see the future. Um 
Uh, it, it's it's quite grim reading for Carlisle, isn't it? We've said this before. I don't really know why we talk about them quite a lot. Well, but, can we put, um, in the last six games, they're currently out of the relegation zone. Because <laughs> they so, won a game. You know, we'll, we'll put it on that. Bear in mind that the, the four teams below them are Cheltenham, Port Vale, Burton and Cambridge. <laughs> so, you know, not great reading. And perhaps, you know. <laughs> so, you know. And we'll point out, Stephen is only 16th. Yeah. So... This game is just going to be crap, isn't it? I, I've just had a thought as well. It's international weekend and Jamie Reid's away. So Stephen Hitch's top scorer was 17, 16 or 17. Also can't play this weekend. Oh, incredible. Carlisle are going to win. That's it, sorted. And, and they've got no Piagiani from oh, his really? elbow. Um, I, I've just thought of that. I forgot Jamie Reid's not available. So I'm going to change my score prediction now. Um, that, has, that, has that nabbed it? Are we both... Are we both going? If you, if you, if we'd have said this four weeks ago, it would have been shot. But are we both going for Carlisle United wins? No, I, I've not done that. Oh, <laughs> I've not gone that extreme. Man. You boring not... man. <laughs> they, they've literally got two clean sheets all season, and I've gone for them having a third. I've gone for two nil nil draws so far. <laughs> That's going to be the most boring weekend of League One football. We're going 2 1 Carlisle. I don't know where their two goals are coming from, but they're getting two goals somehow. Ooh, where would their two goals come from? A penalty for someone being and yanked the halfway down. Line. And the halfway line. <laughs> Sorted it. Brilliant. Um, the now one I thing I will say right, imagine the 90th minute, it's 1 1, and the goalkeeper's just on the halfway line hoofs the ball into the box for someone to get ahead on it and he just accidentally goes into the goal. <laughs> the, the wind in Cumbria needs to be strong this weekend. Yes, and I, I have faith. Um, <laughs> one thing um, that is concerning for Stevenage as well is they've scored uh, none in their last four as well. Um, they have the least accurate passes per match, but they have the third most accurate crosses per match. Um, and they are pretty good at winning the ball in the final third. But I'm pretty sure that's because they're extremely good at crowding in the middle of the pitch and winning the second balls, which Carlisle are really bad at. Um, when do we uh, rebrand this podcast as an anti Stevenage rant rather than a <laughs> League One podcast? Uh, mm, probably quite soon. This is why the background's next, next, next week. <laughs> next next week. Uh, who have they got next? Who have Stevenage got next? They got Bolton. Oh, yes, that's good to talk oh, about. Oh, incredible. <laughs> incredible. And the reverse fixture for this game, if anyone is interested, um, it was uh, a, two, a, a draw. So I've What's just deleted that. I've just deleted the section with the score in accidentally. It was either nil nil or two two. I can't remember. I've just deleted the section. So, it, so it's it gone was well. a draw, and Carl and United are gonna are gonna be gonna they're gonna they're gonna stay up. They are. They're gonna stay up. This is you've heard it here first. Carlisle United are gonna stay up. They, they are going to win their remaining. Click baited you all. We've click baited you all. <laughs> that, League One that... predictions. Carlisle to stay up. There we go. We've said it now. We can put it in the title. Yeah, Paul Simpson's going to get a statue if he does that. <laughs> Give him the freedom of Carlisle. Um, Brilliant. Uh, speaking of a team that uh, have recently played with a bit of freedom after I uh, well asked them to a little bit, um, I'm taking all the credit for this, is Derby County. Yeah. This is completely uh, your doing, Sam, isn't it? Oh, yes. Paul Warren definitely listens to <laughs> a geezer who's just got his level one FA coaching badge. That's it. it might, he it doesn't do. forget the pro license. Don't need that. Um, yes, Derby County sitting in a very healthy position at the moment. Four points clear of Bolton Wanderers. It's level, I believe I've got the table in front of me. They are now level on games as well, which is kind of huge. It's... If I'm Derby and I win this weekend, you're seven points clear. Yes, you've played a game more, but you've got your points on the board. And the yeah. way Bolton are sort of a bit up and down at the moment. Um, yeah, I know but, yeah, Bolton have lost three in their last ten. I just find them a bit up and down a bit at the moment. And they've always got a silly red card in them as well. Um, Derby are third best in away form. Third best for goals per match, third best for goals conceded per match, second most clean sheets, third for XG. But the weird thing about XG in League One is you've got Posh and Pompey both on about, I think it's 65, and then it's Derby on 58. There is a huge gulf between the top two and then Derby. Mm. 
Um, they have the best XG conceded. They have the most accurate crosses per match at six as well. And um, they've obviously had to change their style a little bit recently with the introduction of Dwight Gale into the team. And I believe he actually came off injured last week. Yeah, they've won four in a row. Potentially so. for a few weeks, apparently, uh, Dwight Gale. Um, apparently, like, uh, I say BBC Sports, Dominic Dietrich was uh, was saying um, uh, they're still waiting on scan results for Dwight Gale. Um, it looks like it'll be weeks at least. So again, mm. potentially out for the rest of the season. Uh, but Connor Washington uh, looks like he's back in the squad. Uh, and uh, James Collins as well. Derby fans will be happy oh, to know. That, that's good news. Um, well, uh, well, apparently he's, he's back involved in squad training. That will be on the grass apparently before the Black Ball game. So That'd some interesting, interesting, uh, interesting potentially for... Uh, for Derby County, looks like they're, you know, okay, they've kind of had that signing of Dwight Gale to get them through to this period. Yeah. And you, you'd think with, with how many games they've got left, they should be able to get, should be able to see it through, you'd, you'd imagine. Yeah, they're in good form. They've beat Port Vale 3 0, Bristol Rovers 3 0, Reading 2 1, and then got that impressive 1 0 victory, a huge victory against Bolton. But it's only important if they back it up. Their next two are Northampton and Blackpool before they travel to Portsmouth. So, realistically they it's, this is a massive game for them their final two games of the season you'd expect them to win because they've got cambridge and carlisle um so for bolton they realistically bolton probably need to win four or five of them to catch them yeah um but for northampton they've had i think a pretty well, uh... decent season um sitting in the uh sitting in mid table um their 13th for home form they've only got one win in their last six but they do have a lot of injuries um sam hoskins hasn't completed a 90 minutes since january um, when you're losing a player of his quality it is incredibly difficult i know they've got mark leonard um but you're taking all the goals out of their team with someone like sam hoskins i think um, uh well I, I ended the form tale with carlisle in 20th 19th is northampton hmm. and i think they're very much in trouble though they're one of those teams now that they've had a great season this year and i'm, I'm not denying that but if they don't, uh, the, we see it all the time in in every sport, let alone football. But if they end this season in a poor run of form, like famously Sheffield United did uh, at that at the end of that COVID season, um, they could very much end up in trouble next year. So for them, I yeah. think these these next, you know, how many, how have they got six or seven, eight games left of the season, um, seven games left of the season for them is vital for arresting this current rot of form mm -hmm. uh, and building for next season. But I, I can't see them doing it with Derby. I'm going to go 2-0 to the Rams. I've, I've gone for the same. Oh, damn it. I've gone damn for it. the same. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, I think, like we say, Northampton have had a good season. For Derby, if performances now go out the window, it's all about results yeah. now. I think at the start of the season, for me, performances are more crucial than results because eventually performances do catch up with you um but you are now at i call it crunch time and with the experience in derby county squad you'd expect them to get over the line i think yeah oh well we'll talk about the uh, the promotion and the the title chase after after a little break but um yeah looking at the points per game stuff which is a, a stat i'll go into in a minute uh, they should comfortably finish second yeah, so we'll quickly, like Callum said, just go to an ad break and we'll be back momentarily. OK, and welcome back to the League One preview show. So the three games have been covered. That is it for League One this weekend due to international duty for a mass majority of the clubs. And it's a question I'm actually going to ask you before we get into a bit of a more of a discussion is international break in League One. Is it time that we just right league one off a bit like the championship now with the under amount of under 21s coming into league one clubs is it time just to go right international break is international break now for league one as well i think there's there's a system that they have in in the national league where if a game gets called off because of well i don't know if it's national league but especially you know in lower non-leagues where if a game gets called off earlier in the season they kind of leave this week free or they leave a mm -hmm. week free in the season for for rained off games or, or whatever games. Potentially, you could kind of see it working in, in that way 
potentially where if a game gets called off in the season, they kind of use this as a, as a period where those games could be could be put in. Mm. I think with with how congested fit how congested uh, fixtures tend to be in League One to account for international breaks would be incredibly hard mm. to, to plan with. Um, so it's kind of one of those informal understanding that a lot of the games in this week will probably get cancelled, but if they can play them, they're there kind of thing. Yeah, it's a fair point. It's a, it's a difficult one, isn't it, I suppose, for the FA? Um, not it's Because obviously you get Premier League clubs, they're ch- chomping, chomping your ear off saying we're playing too many games because they average what? Let's say you're a, I don't know, a Brighton. You're playing your 38 Premier League games. You're playing, let's say, seven or let's say eight in Europe, just because it makes my maths easier, is 40, 46. 46. And then you're playing five cup games, I think, max. You'll probably get into the fifth round of the FA Cup, fourth round of the Carabao Cup. So you're playing 55 games. Roughly, the yeah. EFL clubs have to play 46 league games on their own. They will... Let's say they get to the third round of a the both cup competitions. So you're already at 52. Then you've got the Bristol Street Mo- Motors Trophy. That's 55 you've got, already. Yeah. You've got 55 already. So that. And obviously, I mean, pitches it, it aren't as good, out, but the pitches aren't as good. Yeah. I don't know. You, but then that that's you know that's on account of a team like Brighton getting into Europe. If you if you look at a non-Europe club like Wolves, for example, they're mm. playing less than that. You know, Wolves could only play theoretically forty games a season. Yeah, thirty-eight prem and one in each cup if they get knocked out in the first round. Um, yeah. it you know, and that's I don't, I don't know. I I don't think you can immediately factor in such thing as an international break, especially in League One, where the pitches aren't as good as Championship level, that kind of thing. Um. But I think there needs to be an understanding that a lot of the games in each of these periods will probably get called off. Yeah. So, yeah, I've I've gone on record before on uh, social media saying I, I I don't see the point in this international break. It's friendlies. Nobody cares. It's crunch yeah. time in the season, especially if your club's involved in it. You just want your club to be playing friendlies. I couldn't yeah. give a I couldn't give a toss about it, to be honest. Like like we were talking about it um, at work. Lincoln, this is the worst time for an international break for a team like Lincoln. Yeah, hundred percent, and it's the best uh, time for one for us. Yeah, it, I, I just think it's it's horrific. But yeah, we'll we'll talk about the playoff chase in a minute. But but um, well, I, I suppose what what having an international break does is it allows us to kind of take stock of of what we've got in this running. You know, seven games left for the majority of of teams, and it, it leaves us with. I suppose, as always, is three very distinct battles for the for the for automatic promotion promotion slash title. I suppose mm-hmm. we can kind of bungle them into one for that yeah. sixth place, and then for twentieth place or twentieth. I'm going to say the battle for twenty first that okay. no one wants to yeah. win. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's, I it's mean, the battle that yeah. no one wants to win, but it's it's a battle that's happening. Um, there's a, a, an interesting. I don't know what the method is. I know there's a specific method. It's got a name. But if you take the points per game of the last 10 games and then apply that for the rest of the season, mm-hmm. it gives you a prediction of, of who's going to win the league, right? Um, and we did that. Uh, well, I, I was I was lucky enough to be uh, to be over at Radio Derby uh, this week, and we kind of figured out that on that current form over the last 10 games, Portsmouth would walk the title and somehow they'd even get to the 100-point margin. They'd reach 100 points exactly, uh, with an average of 2.4 points per game, which you know is incredibly high. Is, yeah. Um, Derby with a slightly more manageable 2.2 um, would reach 93 points, so seven points off. Mm. Um, and Barnsley would be in third with 86 points to Bolton's 85 and Peterborough's 83 on current form. Mm. That's Which interesting. is interesting because a lot of people would probably predict Peterborough to finish third on current form and Bolton in yeah. fourth and and Barnsley in in fifth maybe. So it's it's all up in the air, I think. Yeah, I'd have it no other way to be honest. Um, I still 
it's a really difficult one because Peterborough went through that horrible spell, didn't they? Yeah. Um Of what what is actually going on, and now Barnsley are sort of going through that run with one win in four. But again, if you look at just if you're a statistical person, it's all just caught up with Barnsley because they don't rank very highly in any sort of statistic. Especially yeah, still somehow they're predicted points. to finish third. They're still somehow yeah. predicted with that method expected to finish third. Um, obviously, we we see a lot of these supercomputers mm. um, uh, at this point of the year. Uh, one that was posted on social media uh, has Derby County third, Bolton second, Barnsley fourth, and Peterborough fifth. So a, a complete reordering of yeah of that of that second to fifth. So. It, it, it's I don't I don't want to say it's it's up in the air, it is, but it it is up in the air. But I kind of can can see Derby comfortably finishing second. Yeah. Portsmouth, I think Portsmouth have all but won the league mm-hmm. at this at this point. Five points is is not impossible to overturn, but it is difficult to overturn. So I, I can see the top three staying as they are: Portsmouth, Derby, Bolton, um, and then I can I can I I can see Peter finishing fourth and Barnsley fifth. I I can see yeah. it ending as it is. I think that would be a fair reflection of the season. I, I'm going to go the other way. I'm going to have uh, Peterborough third, Bolton fourth, Barnsley fifth. On the final day of the season, it's Peterborough versus Bolton. So yes. that could be a battle for. Who do you want to play in the playoffs? Everyone's going to want to play the sixth place team. Uh, well, I do think. You, though? Unless, do unless you? it's Lincoln. Unless it's Lincoln. Yeah. Yeah. And they continue their current tra- trajectory. But usually the sixth place team comes in with momentum, but there's, there's what, a seven, eight point gap at the moment. So somehow. Um, so yeah, moving on to the battle for sixth and the final playoff place. I've gone for five teams going for it. You could say it's four. I have gone five. Um, have, you, have you have you chucked Leighton Orient in there? I have. I there have. you go. There yeah. you go. <laughs> so you've got Oxford United, who, for me, I don't think they'll get top six. I'm going to say that outright. Current, they have got Shrewsbury, Fleetwood, Burton as their next three. So you, they need to get nine points because the following three are Posh, Lincoln and Stevenage. With Exeter on the final day, so that's a tough run in. Yeah, that is a tough run in. Then you've got Lincoln, who Represent. sits on sixty-one, <laughs> another most informed team in League One, I believe. In in the country, I think it's in the country. Is it, is it, it must be in the country. I can't. I don't know what off the top of my head. Liverpool, Manchester City, and Arsenal's recent form is all leads, but they're, they're Lincoln have got to be up there. And you've learned to score goals as well. Scoring, yeah, what is it six, miracles have six, happened. Five. Um, you've got Orient, Carlisle, Reading, Wigan, Oxford, Cheltenham, and Pompey on the final day. But Pompey will probably have the title wrapped up. By Pompey will have the title the wrapped up. up. So, yeah, you, you'd you'd back Lincoln to win. Yeah. So you're sitting on sixty one, Oxford sixty three. Then you've got Stevenage on sixty one. They've got Carlisle, Bolton, Cheltenham, Exeter, Barnsley, Burton. That's an all right run in, but on the current yep. form that Stevenage are in, I don't think you can guarantee nope. anything for them, really. Because you've got Barnsley, who are hit and miss. Bolton are obviously a decent, a very good team. And Charlton of and Nathan Jones are on fire. So that's good. That's a challenging run in. Um, one point further back is Blackpool. They have Derby, Wickham, Cambridge, Fleetwood, Carlisle, Barnsley, and Reading. That's a very favourable run-in. Yeah, I, I think that's that, you, you'd want to have that sort of run-in, wouldn't you? Okay, there's there's a few games spattered in there that you you might not want. Of course, Derby, difficult team. Wickham are on form, but you've got the home advantage in that game, and obviously Barnsley. But again, the home advantage. So it seems everyone's playing each other in this running because we move on to Orient, who's the outside, the big outsiders, because they. Unfortunately, lost to Bristol Rovers. And, but again, you're uh, only you're only five points off, and you're only three yeah. points off Lincoln, who are considered the favourites. And we have Lincoln next, then Peterborough, then Cheltenham, Exeter, Derby, Fleetwood, and Shrewsbury. So it, ours, I think ours is one. 
along with Stevenage is the trickiest. Yeah, but I think also I have, I have to look at it from a from a kind of Lincoln perspective because they're the two <laughs> that I I deal with. If we beat, I if we get a draw, as I would argue, as long as we avoid defeat against Orient, mm-hmm. we're favourites. Yeah, I would agree, and then we're out because we we've got to win six of these eight. I I would I I think I did I did the stats and I I I'd say that you know, on current form Lincoln are getting if you look at the last ten games I kind of extended that that top five that the maths that we worked out mm. Lincoln would average Peterborough United on current form would finish on eighty three points Lincoln would finish on seventy nine Okay so that's four points off on yeah. on current form Lincoln are only four points off Peterborough United which is in you know incredible. Yeah, yeah, that's that's an incredible turnaround. You'd you'd argue that form is incredibly unsustainable, um, especially with the news, obviously that that Rico Hackett, uh, not Rico Hackett, Arahan uh, has a suspension um, for the next game. <laughs> yeah, we Good. currently, I'd argue, we have eighty percent of one midfielder for that Orient game, with yeah. the, our only recognised central midfielder fit being Teddy Bishop, and he's he's a good player. Yeah, He's only ever eighty percent fit, is what is what I say. Yeah. So you you you're looking at midfield. I've kind of toyed with the idea of what what if he kind of brings Jackson in at CDM, or mm-hmm. what if he brings O'Connor in as that holding midfielder, and then um and then has that that midfield of of um, Moylan and Mandroy, which seems to be doing so well. But anyway, we'll, we'll get onto the specifics of that game next week. I. The thing is, with with Lincoln, you 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 always it's it's currently that run that you you keep predicting it to end, mm. but you don't know when it actually will. No, yeah, I know what you mean. It, you you, re- you don't know. <laughs> would you, would you say it's been an it's been a, obviously a really weird season for Lincoln, isn't it? Because you started off okay, you sacked Mark Kennedy. We, we started off average. We started off really, really average, and that was that was yeah. all right for Lincoln fans. That was then, that was okay. We we were never expecting to be anything more than average this right. season. And then obviously Scabala come in. You had no we strikers, and you were really bad. And there was a point where uh, you went on record and said that you could go. We down. were three games away from a relegation battle. We were, and now you're. In the dizzying heights of, was it se- uh, seventh. seventh? And scoring there was one goals point we were fun. sixth. We were sixth at one point, yeah. I think, during the game. It, it's it's football. It's it's <laughs> really <laughs> really weird, and that the weird thing is, is Lincoln City fans now will be disappointed if they don't get playoffs. Yeah, without realizing what a stupidly amazing season this has been. Yeah, and you and to be honest, you've got who have you you've got a couple of players on loan, but you haven't your better I think I'm right in saying your best players aren't on loan. So obviously Jensen, who is second top clean sheets, this is the first season for a while that Lincoln have had their own goalkeeper, mm-hmm. uh, an actual contracted player. So he's not disappearing at the end of the season. Um the only midfield, the only sorry, defender that might believe in. Um, well, the only midfielder we know is leaving would be Jack Burrows. He's seemingly let slip he'll be back at Coventry soon with a tweet saying, see you later, boys, or something like that oh, on, on Twitter. <laughs> so he's not staying for the rest of the season, but he's been injured and then has struggled to find his way back into the team since 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 picking up a knock. Um, Alex Mitchell is an interesting one. I have never seen an effort to keep a player from a fan base Quite like Alex Mitchell at Lincoln City, that that man has achieved cult status within this squad already. We he's, he's yeah. been an incredible loan signing. We had Alex Mitchell on loan, um, not last season, the season before, yeah. and our, our fans really liked him as a defender. He's bloody brilliant at that. I as always questioned person. his on the ball, his ball playing ability. Um, I think, luckily, with the system that we play with three at the back, that role's given to Sean Rowan, mm. who is who is the slightly more forward-thinking of the three full-backs. Mitchell's role, really, 
and you kind of get it in his personality has been the hoof it yeah. and <laughs> yeah. make sure that no one scores kind of he's, role. <laughs> he's come through the Millwall Academy. That's pretty much there. You can defend. Tell. Yeah, you can tell. Um, I, I, and obviously McGrandles, but he's out injured. So, you know, in terms of loan signings, there's been a real effort from the club to to make sure that the best players aren't loan. Mm. I think Jez George, the you know, who's one of the play, people in charge of the whole contract situation, he's he's gone on record saying this is the best position the club have been in in terms of contracts um, for the end of the season. And if you look at, you know, there's a lot of worry that players like Ethan or Ryan will leave the club mm. at the end of the season. He's he's rumoured to be worth a mil, which for a team like Lincoln City would be incredible. Mm. That's you know that would be incredible to 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 get him off for for that amount. Um, whether he leaves or not is is a question for summer. Um, but in the in the context of this playoff chase, because I'm aware I don't want this to be a me praising Lincoln City and <laughs> future planning for the whole club. I I always this is just me being worried. I don't want to curse them. So I want to say Lincoln will get into the playoffs. And hand on heart, I don't know a team that could beat Lincoln City to the playoffs because Stevenage have got a reason they won't get into the playoffs. Oxford United have a reason they won't get into the playoffs. Blackpool have a reason they won't get into the playoffs in terms of their inconsistency. Mm. Leighton Orient have the reason, I guess, that their form doesn't seem to be omnipresent. No. That they don't seem to have a basis of results, mm-hmm. and they are far away. But then again, it, that might be the position you want to be in. Lincoln's the only team you can not give a concrete reason as to why they wouldn't make the playoffs. No, I, I think but, that's fair. But but therein lies the reason they won't get in the playoffs <laughs> because it, the pressure's it, on them. Because because. All of a sudden, they've gone from this position of not having any pressure to within ten. Well, within you know that ten day period of scoring those sixteen goals, the pressure's now completely on Lincoln. Hmm. It is. It's now on Lincoln because I, I was listening. To, I've listened to the Guardian Football Weekly podcast or football whatever hmm. podcast for years. Right? They have hardly ever. Seldom mentioned Lincoln City on that podcast, and they spoke about it like we were the best side in the world on that podcast. Yeah, and I'm yeah. just, I'm very scared that I don't know how the club will react to that. We've not had this pressure ever, I don't think. You know, even when we won League Two, I wouldn't ever say we were under a lot of pressure. We, you know, Lincoln City have always been the side that. Even when they did well in the FA Cup, there were several other teams that were kind of doing incredible things that mm. season in the FA Cup, and everyone was just like, "Oh crap, Lincoln are playing Arsenal." <laughs> no one really <laughs> knows how that happened. So yeah. now other people outside the club are taking note, and you don't know how any team's going to react to that. So I, I kind of want I every part of me wants to predict Lincoln not to finish in the playoffs. But I feel like if I did do that now, I'm purely doing it because I don't want to jinx it. <laughs> mm-hmm. I, 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 I'll say it. I've gone for Lincoln to finish sixth. I think you've got oh. a very favourable run in, personally. You've got players coming into form at the right time. Yes, you're struggling a little bit in central midfield, but I just think you'll just outscore someone at the moment. So. I just, well, it's going to come really, back to buy, uh, buy us next week when I, we I don't want to say um, it. This is the thing. I'm going to say Blackpool. I am. I'm going to say Blackpool. I feel like they've gone under the radar quite considerably this season. They've never really been in the playoffs, and I can kind of see them, kind of see them pipping it at the post. I don't think many people have, not to be harsh, Blackpool, but you've not really had any standout. I'm not going to say. I mean, obviously, your big standout moment was when you beat Portsmouth to end their on being mm. run. I think that was a big moment, but no one's really cared. 
about what your season's been this year. Do you know what I mean? No I know what you mean. You... They're just there. Yeah, like, see, you look at all those teams. Oxford have had, oh, my God, we're really good. Oh, no, crap, we're really bad. <laughs> that's That's been their season. Stevenage has been, how much can we hate Steve Evans? Uh, and Leighton Orient has, I suppose, kind of been slow and steady wins the race. Is yeah, it's been, be a, fair to say? it's been a tale of, like, three parts our season. We were playing okay, but not getting results. Then we got results, and then we went through a spell forgetting how to play football, and then we turned really good. But um, Blackpool's is the one that I, I just couldn't tell you what. They've just been average all career. season, haven't they? Yeah, I, could, I couldn't yeah. tell you what their story arc has been this year, if, yeah. if that makes sense. So I, I'd go with I'd, I'd go with them to sneak in playoffs, but then do nothing in the playoffs. Mm, that's probably fair. Yeah. But that's purely because I don't want to predict Lincoln to do well. Cool. So we have gone for Lincoln and Blackpool for sick. Moving to the other end of the table, I've gone for it's between three teams for this 21st place, or the, the 21st place and the fourth relegation place. I've gone, it's yeah. between Burton, Cambridge and Cheltenham. You're not putting Fleetwood in there? No. No. I, I think it's too yeah. little too late for Fleetwood. Yes, they're in decent form. What I will say... If Fleetwood beat Cheltenham next week, then we can have this conversation. I just think Ch- Fleetwood have played more games than everyone. Yeah. And Cheltenham have their that game in hand still. And <sighs> the thing is, like everyone always says you want points on the board. I think that, that doesn't necessarily apply when you're your top of the league in a way, because you're kind of more confident you'll get the three points. But at the bottom of the league you need points on the board. You, yeah, you'd, I'm just... you'd rather have points on the board rather than games in hand. So Fleetwood, I'm looking at their fixtures. They have to play Cheltenham next. They then Huge have Oxford, game. Blackpool, Northampton, Peterborough, Orient and Burton on the final day. That, depending on the results, Fleetwood Burton on the final day could be huge. I hope they put, if it is like this now, like now and Fleetwood are like two points off, Sky, I better bloody put that game on TV. Not just yeah, concentrate you... on the top, you've got to concentrate on the bottom as well. Yeah, that'd be a huge game, wouldn't it? I, I, I kind of agree with you that out of the out of if if it was to be four teams, you know, hypothetically, if it was four teams in that battle, that Fleetwood are probably still one of the worst two out of the four, so would still get relegated. I don't think it's fair to completely write them out. Mm-hmm. just yet but i think out of the hypothetical four they are the i'd probably say the third worst team at the moment yeah but what what charlie fair play to charlie adam he's gone in there and he's turned a, a, a pretty mediocre he's, he's club. turned them into a charlie adam team if yeah. i'm honest a very team that is 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 very average charlie adam was was very average wasn't he yeah. He, he occasionally had this incredible moment of beauty, very rarely, <laughs> but it was it was it was beautiful. And then got to moved to Liverpool. <laughs> and then, yeah, did you know? I mean, like, you can kind of see that happening. Is if if Charlie Adams stays there next year, you can kind of see it just being like, oh crap, Fleetwood are in the playoffs. Mm. Oh crap, Fleetwood have produced a moment of magic to win said playoffs. But I, I would argue that you know that. Then they don't have enough Charlie Adam magic moments to warrant survival. I think yeah, so. I, I'll put, I I'll put them down. I just don't think they can do it again. They just about did it last year. I, I just put don't them think down, they. Twenty first. Oh, that's that's fair. Because Cambridge are garbage. <laughs> Cambridge, I mean, they are Cambridge really bad. Cambridge need a Gary Monk prayer, don't they? They need a they need a trip to the monastery. We could have a situation where Burton and Cambridge go down, and Chel- I know I've written off Fleetwood, but Cheltenham and Fleetwood actually stay up. Possible. It, it's it's fun, dude. It's possible. And like I say, you know, you you would rather have the points on the board, but say Cheltenham do pick up one, I'm not sure who their game in hand is against. Is it Port Vale? They're the only two teams that have only played 37. Yeah. Not sure who their game in hand is against, but if they win, they're on. Say they win one nil. They're tied on goal difference with Burton, and they're only one point behind. So I'm looking at Burton's fixtures. 
they've got Port Vale next, then they've got Wigan, Barnsley, Oxford, Stevenage, Cheltenham, Reading. So every rele- the re- there's relegation games. They don't have many middle games, do on. they? No. But poor old Cambridge, their last six games I don't think could be much worse. Oh dear. They've got Barnsley away next. Wigan at home, and Wigan are in really, really good form. Blackpool away. Charlton at home. Bristol Rovers away. Derby at home. And Wickham at home. I can't see them winning any of them. I think they're gone. You you, you look at that now. I I genuinely think... I genuinely think the table will end up then with... with, And I can't believe I'm saying this. But Fleetwood twenty first, Cambridge twenty second. Because if, I, I, and even if it comes down to goal difference, Cambridge's will be worse. I think next week winner stays up out of Cheltenham and Fleetwood. Yeah. Then Cheltenham have Exeter, Orient, Carlisle, so that's three points. Bristol Rovers, Burton, Lincoln, and then Posh and Stevenage. So out of them, I'd expect Cambridge to go in 22nd. And then it's who'd you pick? Burton, Cheltenham or Fleetwood to go with them. I'd go with Fleetwood. I I would go with Fleetwood 21st. Um, It's probably worth writing these down, actually, and and looking at, you know... I will write these down. We've got, effectively, 1st and 2nd to predict, 6th to predict... And yeah. 20th, uh, 19th, 20th, 21st, and 22nd to predict effectively. So, to, to summarize, I suppose, as we, we come yeah. towards the end of the pod, I'd go with Portsmouth and Derby first and second. Yep. Blackpool sixth with fingers crossed that it's Lincoln. Yeah. <laughs> um, 19th, I'll go with. I'll go with. Cheltenham purely on the basis of their goal difference is better Cheltenham and I can 19th. see where they might get a win or two from yep. I'd go with Burton 20th Fleetwood 21st Cambridge 22nd Okay and then Cambridge, my writing is so bad um, so for mine, I'll, I'm going to Pompey top, I think we've got the same top two Pompey and Derby yeah, yeah I've gone uh, for uh, Lincoln in 6th and then 19, 20, 21, and 22. I'll have Cambridge 22, like you. I'm going to have... Re- it really doesn't matter who finishes 19, 19 does it, or 22nd. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's just it's, extra it's... brownie points, I suppose. Yeah. Um, it's, it's a really difficult one, isn't it? It's because you, you can see, even though there's four points between them, how bad of a form they're all in, with the exception of Fleetwood, but they've got so much further to come. With how bad of a form they're all in, and the story that Cheltenham surviving would be, it's so I, hard to call. I've backed Cheltenham to stay out for a long time, so I'm going to continue to back them. I've put Cheltenham 19th. The only difference between mine and yours is I've put Burton to go down Ooh. and Fleetwood to stay out. I wrote Fleetwood off. I've looked at the form, I've looked at the fixtures properly, and I'm saving Fleetwood to stay up. Do we know when Burton were last in the in the playoff? I'll uh, I'll try and get it. I'll try and get their what's it called? Um their story of the season so, up. But I can't remember when Burton were last. In... They were near the playoffs, weren't they, at the start of the year? Because they started off oh, they started off really shit though, didn't they? They lost their first four. Well, let me try and I'll try and find you fill time. You fill time. I'll try and it, find their story in the so season. It's a Burton. It's oh, so Burton must. Be, it's been a really weird rise for Burton because they were they had two really good. They fourth, finished fourth, sixth, and then they won League Two with ninety four points. Then they got immediate promotion from League Two, uh, from League Two to League One to then the Championship. So they got back to back promotions there, finishing second in League uh, One. Then they finished twentieth, which was mightily, mightily impressive in the Championship. To be fair, on the budget they had. Then they got relegated to 23rd. Then they finished 9th, 12th, 16th, 16th, 15th. And now 
they're in a relegation scrap. And I'd so, be quite interested to know where it's all gone wrong for Burton, because I predicted you to finish top six at the start of the season, being honest. So Burton sacked Dino Marmia uh, after Stevenage with Gary Mills in charge, and that actually got them out of the relegation zone. And then they went to Martin Patterson, who yeah. was there, there was a bit of a renaissance, and they were last in the relegation zone. Um when they played Derby, actually, 3-2, and then it was the week after when they beat Charlton 2-0 that put them out of the relegation zone. So they've been out of the the relegation zone since game week 29. Mm-hmm. Um, but in total, they have only spent three... Since game week 10, they've only spent three weeks in the bottom four. Huh. They only need to so, spend five minutes in the bottom four. <laughs> well, do, do you know what I mean? It doesn't matter, I suppose. It doesn't matter where you are at the end of the season. It doesn't matter where you are in the whole of the season if you're in there at the end of the season. So, no, so... I, I know a lot of Burton fans are still unconvinced by Patterson. And yeah. I can see why nothing's really changed. No, nothing's changed. No, absolutely nothing. Um, so they are our predictions. Get in touch at... What is it? What is our Twitter? League One Look. Yes, that that's one, it. Yeah, that, that's at League one. one Look, let us know what your predictions are for the end of the season, especially in the relegations battle, because we think that's quite an intriguing one, especially when they all seem to be playing each other. Um, if you They're all playing on... each other, and there's a story for each one staying up and exactly. going down, I think. Is this Sky different. Sports, make sure you pick the right games. Um, if you listen on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, make sure you give us a five-star rating. And uh, for myself and Callum... We will see you uh, next time.